Secretary, Department of Public Enterprise, Mr. O.P. Rawat, my friend Markan Adhikari, and distinguished guests here this evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media. I think uh, we have many awards and many ceremonies all across Delhi and in the country, but very few are dedicated to celebrate the success of the public sector. And I think it is very important that uh, the role and the effort of the public sector must be recognized, must be respected. There is, of course, as you have all seen in the last couple of decades, the opening up of the economy, a lot of uh, private sector participation, a lot of public private sector participation. But one thing is for sure, that the backbone of the Indian economy has been the strength of the public sector. Since independence, the government set up many public sector units, has asked public sector to go to strategic locations, which even in today's day and times after 65 years plus of independence, many people do not venture or adventure rather to go and uh, explore or to set up businesses across the vast length and breadth of our country. And today, I can say even after so many years, and as I said, of decades of private sector and public-private partnerships, it is still today, even today, that the public sector alone has actually gone to the far and remote corners of the country and has truly contributed to nation building. And I think this is a huge effort and a huge task if today the interior parts of the country, the hinterland, the northeast, remote inaccessible areas, areas affected by naturalism or left-wing extremism, if there is somebody who is still doing business, it is the public sector. So I think we have a great <laughs> role which is being played by the public sector. But at the same time, the challenges of our economy, of the global economy, we can't live anymore in an insulated world. We cannot say that what was relevant in 50s, 60s, 70s will be relevant now even in the 21st century. It is a changing world, a globalized world, a very liberalized world in many senses. And that is where the public sector also has to evolve, has to be ready for the challenges of today and more importantly of tomorrow. And I'm sure, and I have been watching many public sector undertakings very closely, administratively, as well as through the Department of Public Enterprise. And I know for sure that some of our public sector are truly fine companies, extraordinary companies, and truly global companies. There is no doubt about that. And it is a reflection of the changing mindset and I'm sure that we are not going to stop here. We at the Department of Public Enterprise have been consistently trying to engage with the public sector because we know that along with you, if we do not work and we do not help you to facilitate the kind of changes which are required, the flexibility which is required, we are ourselves an administrative ministry for the public sector. I have in the past also been in different ministries. And I know for a fact that given the kind of environment and the facilitation which it requires, most of our public sector can truly be not only head on with the competition in India, but also with the rest of the world. 
and I want to see we at the DPE, Mr. Rawat and myself and our other colleagues in the ministry, we've always had this kind of a thought process that we should do everything possible to make, I would say, life easier. I'm not trying to say that uh, easier as in uh, getting everything the way you want it, but to make sure that the flexibility, because many times private sector responds with speed, timely action, which public sector, even with the best of intentions, sometimes gets hamstrung because of the processes which we follow. Not that anybody is deliberately trying to put pressure on them, but the fact is that these are the ways and the systems which we have built over the years. And I think over the period of time, it also had recognized this, is recognizing it, and I'm sure in future we'll recognize it even more. The classifications of many of these companies which you have seen, Mini Ratna, Navratna, and the Maharatnas, is also a step in that direction. As you go higher up, in terms of operating uh, levels, in terms of turnover or profits, your categorization goes up, the powers of the board proportionately go up, and certainly I think these are steps in the right direction, but increasingly over the period of time, there has to be further, you know, I would say flexibility which comes in. A motivation also has to be built in, because at the end of the day, Everybody has an ambition. Everybody would like to rise in his or her own career. And that also has to be some kind of motivational uh, exercise which has to be taken up. And as a result of which, many of the public sector do have some of these kind of motivational or incentivization schemes, but more needs to be done and because when you see today, across India, if you see, in major infrastructure, engineering, power, or such kind of expertise-related sectors, even petroleum, gas, most of the people who are heading these companies have originally come from the public sector. Today, increasingly, the younger generation is moving towards private sector. And that deprives the public sector the opportunity to engage fine young people, boys and girls, who have come out of colleges because they feel that there is a greener side to the public sector, the private sector vis-a-vis -vis the public sector. So we have to also see that this mismatch does not continue for long. 30, 40 years back, getting a job in a public sector or a government job was something which was very sought after. It had its own advantages, it had its own job security, it had its own uh, respect and future. But as I said, with the changing times, all these things are about to, you know, get marginalized or neutralized. And therefore, we must see that how can we bring public sector also onto the forefront. As much as we call it a government company, as much as we say that the stakeholder is the government and therefore the people of the country, but on the other side, you are as much a businessman or should be a businessman as anybody in the private sector. So the mindsets also of the people who manage these companies has to be always thinking out of the box, always thinking ahead and for the future. Some of you had inherent strengths. Somebody had mines, somebody had the land, somebody had the right to buy, I mean, to sell to the government, to any other, uh, uh, you know, organization. So you had a lot of inherent strengths, but those strengths, while some may still exist, but over a period of time, they have started disappearing or getting marginalized or the private sector is catching up with that. So this has to be also very much uh, thought about. BSC is sitting here, our friend, a third of your capitalization market cap comes only from the public sector. It's not a small thing. It is a huge thing. And, if I st and I still tell you that if the same public sector, the same company, if it was a private sector company, would have been valued more than twice what it is valued on the BSC. Still the market valuation or the perception of these companies, 
I mean, Sale uh, chairman is sitting here. He makes how much? 14 million tons of steel. And his, you see his market cap and see any other company which is making half the steel, probably the market cap of that company is equivalent or more. So what does that mean? It means that somewhere people do not give the true value because a lot of the things which the private sector is doing, you are unable to do, not because you can't do it, but because there are constraints in being able to do what the private sector does. So there are companies after companies, I mean, across the sector, whether it's steel, oil and gas, coal, anything. But there has to be also, there's the other side also. The other day we were discussing in the government about making sure that coal is supplied to the power projects which are coming up in the country. And there is a huge kind of a resistance that we cannot produce more. I think somewhere there we will also have to. I mean, it's not only the company which is responsible, even our policies are responsible for that. But we will have to come to some kind of terms with all these things. Sale, after being such a big player in the steel market or steel sector for since independence, I mean, we Childhood, I mean, I, 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 I'm from Gondia, which is near Bilai, so we used to go as kids to see the Bilai steel plant as if, you know, it's a great miracle, and it is. But we've grown up seeing all these kind of things. But today, late entrants have come and almost caught up. That also must change, because today we are having this kind of huge capability, and we must be able to change and make use of that capability. So there are many, I mean, as I said, on sector after sector, the oil and gas sector, I mean, like ONGC is here, they've done a great job, but so much more can be done. And I think we will all have to recognize, of course, there are some inherent, I would say, issues, but at the same time, some companies have also made that extra effort to make sure that they are able to change their mindsets. So ONGC or Gale, some of these companies have been able to, you know, break free of some of these uh, traditional mindsets and the shackles and have been able to venture forward. So yes, we have a life within India, we have a life outside of India. We have to think to, for today, we have to more importantly think of tomorrow. Ultimately, as I said, that though we may be undervalued today, in contemporary times and as things evolve, I'm sure all your inherent strengths ultimately will come to the fore and the PSUs can truly demonstrate that yes, that we are no less than anybody in the world. My congratulations to all the winners of different categories. There is certainly, uh, I would say, an enthusiasm in uh, many companies and that enthusiasm must be sustained and continued. And that is why when I said that we have awards, very few awards are for the public sector. When last year we went to meet the Prime Minister along with the heads of many PSUs, it was probably the first time there was a one-on-one -on -one meeting between the public sector chiefs and the Prime Minister. Every time you read, Prime Minister has invited the captains of industry to meet him to discuss the economy. I think the captains of the public sector are no less, in fact, they are bigger than some of the so-called captains of the private sector. <laughs> but that is how we take it, you know, we take things for granted. So we have to also make sure that you all are given the complete flexibility and the freedom to work in a very competitive environment. And I'm sure we at the DPE will do everything possible, from our end at least, to be facilitators for your growth. And I wish all of you all the success, all the very best. Governance Now has come out with this uh, award ceremony for the first time. I'm sure this will not be the first and the last, and as Mr. Rao said, that this will be the beginning of many more award ceremonies in the years to come. My friend Markan Adhikari is here, 
and I'm sure he and his entire team at his company and at Governance Now will certainly take this initiative forward and I'm sure all of you will go back happy that you all have received your due share of recognition from all of us here. Thank you very much and congratulations to all. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Minister for Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises, Shri Prafur Patel, Shri Vala Subramaniam, Mr. Adhikari, uh, Chief Executives and Senior Executives from Central Public Sector Enterprises, all the awardees and representatives of media. It gives immense pleasure to associate oneself with any award function for public sector enterprises. And Honorable Minister has already highlighted the contribution, the performance of central public sector enterprises of this country. State capitalism, as it is known to the academics, is long dead, actually. In early 90s, with the breakup of USSR and communist bloc, the obituary for state capitalism was written. But in this world, all organisms have enormous capacity of mutating to bring new strength, to bring new ideas, to sustain new life and deliver new things. And that is what has happened to the state capitalism of today. Whether it is in India, or China, Brazil, the largest companies. In fact, major petroleum resources, 75 or 80% of these belong to public sector undertakings of these countries. Vertical structures supporting lower end of production enterprises have come up and this combination is challenging the liberal capitalism of Margaret Thatcher and Reagan era because Europe and America following that almost blindly are having adverse effect of global slowdown whereas most of these emerging economies whether China, India, Brazil or even Russia have withstood this global slowdown, slowdown in a different manner different footing and most of the credit goes to the vibrant public sector, the state capitalist representatives in these countries. However, as Honorable Minister also pointed out, that to remain growing, to remain strong, to remain moving, we have to ensure that we further innovate, further make production of goods and services more flexible, need, uh, matching to the needs of emerging markets, and also ensure that wherever the relevance is evaporating, we go in for creative destruction, which is the strength of liberal capitalism. As already promised by Honorable Minister, the DP is always with you. We will ensure that wherever you find any difficulty, any problem, any bottleneck, DP will always come forward and stand by you and ensure that you are facilitated. Nothing comes in your way when you move forward. I also thank uh, Governance Now and congratulate all the awardees on this occasion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And, uh very uh, warm good evening for all of you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, my uh, greetings to Mr. Rawat. Of course, the minister has already left, as you all know. But uh, I'm extremely happy for the award winners here. Uh, uh, I think the minister also raised certain issues related to the market and how it values the public sector companies. For me, uh, this is something which the market participants, that is the investors, actually how they perceive. As an exchange, our low role is 
to be a financial infrastructure institution. So our role is limited, limited to basically facilitate the public sector units or private sector companies to actually get listed. In fact, one of the debates uh, which we were having just before the event started was whether we should call it a disinvestment or just a process of going public. And in fact, we actually feel that it should be better termed as going public because public sector undertakings already are owned by the public through the government and now you actually make it available to the common Indian public investors as well and that engages better and that also increases more visibility for the public sector companies as such and eventually uh, it, it actually helps all, all, all the entire economy because people start understanding what role public sector units actually play. I'm sure that as, as when I grew up, when I studied economics, we all knew that the Indian economy follows a mixed economy kind of pattern. We have a mix of both the government-owned institutions as well as private-owned institutions. And for a country like us, I think both these are equally important. And we all know that public sector has done human service to the country. They have been really pillars in terms of building uh, various businesses which normally private sector will not probably go and even touch because they will be purely governed by profit as the only motive. Whereas in some sense, public sector has balanced even the social responsibility aspects. And to that extent, today uh, in capital market, there are many investors who have started rewarding these kind of functions as well. So today, corporate social responsibility is one of the things which has been mooted in the new companies bill. I'm sure public sector companies are in the forefront. Again, as BSC, we have been very focused on working with the public sector units uh, right since 1997 when the listings process started for government companies. We have been working with all of them. In fact, 80% of the public sector units have chosen us as a designated exchange. And even in the current year, the last couple of years when the SEBI decided to have at least 10% minimum public shareholding norms for government companies or PSUs, uh, BSC has been very active in working on the offer for sale mechanism. And we have been actually, uh, we have actually helped in almost 80% of the public sector companies actually becoming compliant with the SEBI norms as well. The other thing which I wanted to touch is uh, basically uh, uh, we also have a dedicated BSC PSU website which basically facilitates, which facilitates for the PSU companies which also want to go public to actually get very easy understanding in terms of what it takes to actually go public. And uh, we also have a dedicated PSU index which actually tracks the performance of the PSU sector as such. So in that sense, BSC has always been looking at this particular segment with uh, a lot of importance. And for us, it's a special feeling to be associated with these awards. We have been actually working with the uh, PSE, the, the government ministry, in terms of their annual award exercise, in terms of selecting the best <laughs> and engage with the public sector units again. Thank you very much. Thanks. Once again, congratulations to all the award winners here. Thank you.